everybody. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to this special edition of the Range Report. We put this edition together to congratulate Ali Rutter, who has just been selected in the Australian team to compete in the IWSF Junior World Championships. These championships will take place in Lima, Peru, uh, later on this month. And it's great to see that her coach, Steve Blackburn, is also going to travel with her. Ali's been selected in two events to compete in, that's the 10 metre air pistol and also the 25 metre pistol women event. She's been very busy over the last few months, as a matter of fact, because she was competing in all the selection events to try and gain selection in the Olympic team for Paris. Uh, but unfortunately, she missed out. Uh, but I'm sure she'll make amends for it at the Junior World Championships coming up this month. Congratulations, Ali and you do your best for us and I know you will. Thank you. Here at Cessnock Pistol Club with Ellie Rudder, uh, doing a little bit of fine tuning on your training. You'll be in Melbourne next week and the week after you're going to be at the Junior World Championships. How exciting is your life going at the moment? Yeah, it's really exciting. I think it finally hit me today that we're two weeks away from leaving. So I'm super excited, super pumped and really ready to go. This is not your home club, Cessnock, but you do train here. Steve Blackburn is your coach. He's involved here at, at Cessnock. He gets to go away on tour with you. How important to have that continuity of your coach who's helped you get to this far, go with you, go to the World Championships? Yeah, it's going to be great. You know, having someone who knows me as a person but knows me as a shooter as well, it's going to be a really good strength. I don't think there are many athletes that can turn around and say that they have their personal coach coming on the line with them at a World Championships. And that connection that we're going to have is probably going to be really, really good. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's not something maybe that happens in pistol shooting, but you look at other sports, athletics and swimming, where the coach coaches the athlete all the way through and takes them through to the World Championship Olympic Games. Um, it's a model that maybe uh, we're sort of investigating here in Australia, and, it might, and hopefully it's successful. Yeah, I hope so too, you know. Having that coach who's known you since they started coaching you, build you all the way up into those big competitions and everything, you know, it's good to have that one coach who just knows you so well. You know, it's great to have a team, but to have that coach that just gets you and knows what they need to say to you when you're in that right frame of mind, yeah, I think it could be a really powerful tool in Australia. Well, Steve's behind you right now. He's not only coaching you, he's also coaching new shooters here. So he, uh, he gets from the very beginning, the green shoots right through to the uh, more advanced shooters. Yeah, Steve comes out here every Saturday morning and trains new shooters, you know, the new generation of our sport, especially in the IWSF scene. He comes out here and air pistol of a morning and gets them ready to go, you know. And Steve's had some really great coaching athletes throughout his time. He's coached Olivia Erickson, who went to the Youth Olympics. And his son, Blake Blackburn, went to the Rio Olympics with Daniel Repicoli. And he's also had some other great athletes as well. So it's really great that Steve's now coaching me. He knows me as a person. He knows me as a shooter. And we are a great, formidable combination. Interesting point, too, is... Uh you started the process of trying to qualify for Paris and it was something you weren't really thinking about but you actually went well so you went right through the whole process. How important is that experience going through that qualification to get you here to go to the World Championships? Yeah, well the whole Olympic trials process was just so surreal for me. It was my first time actually joining the Olympic trials process and never in my wildest dreams did I expect to finish in the top three of those Olympic trials and have, head over to Brazil for the final IWSF qualification event. It was really, really great experience. That was my first senior competition on the international circuit and yeah, having that experience um, from Brazil is really, really handy. You know, I know how to get over that time zone difference now. I have that little bit of maturity bringing in for those competition, learning the um, experiences and stuff that I had over there, learning the lessons that I had over there. Yeah, it's really, really great to have that under my belt. You know, the Olympic trials was my plan B for the year. This was my plan A, Junior World Championships. This is what we're working for for the last 12 months. And yeah, I'm ready to give it my all this time. How much have you stepped up your training? Do you continue doing what you're doing prior to selection or do you step it up now in the lead up? Yeah, we've stepped it up big time. We've divided it into training blocks. So if we have a competition at the end of the training block, we'll use that 
as a little bit of a leverage to what we need to work on for the next one. But the last 12 months, this is what Steve and I have been doing. We've been grinding away, working away, trying to get those one percenters in so to make me the best shooter I can be. And I've never done more work in my life in the last 12 months. And that's a credit to Steve as well. He's really taken the time to help me develop as a shooter. And yeah, it's great. And you're wearing your IWSF Finals Olympic uh, qualifying shirt from uh, overseas, so uh, proud moment to get some of that uh, special gear into the cupboard. You'll have an uh, Australian uniform going to the juniors? Oh yeah, of course. Every time I go to a competition, I have to get merchandise, you know. I have to, you know, experience that fact of being there. But yeah, wearing the green and gold is such an honour. And you know, and this is the third time I'm doing it this year. And every time I put on that uniform, I want to do my best. And I'm really hoping that I can show Australia and the shooting community what I can do over there. And the World Junior Championship, a stepping stone, Olympics on your horizon, obviously LA you'd love to qualify and even uh, Brisbane 2032, those are not that far away. C do you reach out and dream about those? For sure, yeah. I think I kind of got a taste this year of what I'm capable of. You know, t 18 months ago I nearly quit the sport. I just fell out of love with it completely and Steve really helped me regain that love for the sport and I kind of got to dip my toes a little bit this year into being so close to making the Olympics. So I think it's lit that fire under my belly of, yeah, I really want to go for it now. I can't wait for the LA Olympics and the Brisbane 32 Olympics, but right Right now, my goal is to do well at the World Championships. And time management for you, you're into equestrian, so you do ride the horses, you're studying medicine, uh, you know, you've got a lot of different things pulling you in a lot of different directions, you've just gone tunnel vision on this at the moment? Yeah, I have, you know, this is the main goal for me this year, so I've wanted to put everything I can into it, but at the same time, I'm a busy woman, I have a lot of things I've got to do, but I also have a great support team that help me get through everything I need to do, help me get through university, equestrian, work and shooting as well. But yes, the last month or two, we've been tunnel vision on this. This is my priority and giving it all, my all is the best thing I can do. So it's a varied sporting uh, plate you've got there with equestrian and shooting. How do you end up in both of those sports? Yeah, so my mum um, has ridden basically all of her life. Her, grand her parents didn't want her to ride at all, but she managed to convince them to buy her a horse. And she's been riding ever since then. And Dad's shooting in 2012. And I would go out to the range at Tugger Lakes Pistol Club, help out, you know, do some scoring, do some patching, and just get a vibe of what shooting was like. And as soon as I turned 12, I wanted to start shooting. I started shooting air pistol, sport pistol, which is what you have to start at as a junior. And I just got hooked after that. I made my first tri-state team within a year. And yeah, I got really, really into it. And I love it now. I've loved it ever since. How important the support of your parents? It means the world to me, you know. They do so much for me to be able to do the things that I love to do. And without their support, I probably wouldn't be here today. So I'm always grateful for my family. So Ellie, you've got uh, your coach here, Steve, with you now. Um, you just talk about how important it is to have that continuity of coaching, Steve. Um, you must be very proud of where Ellie's got in such a short period of time. Uh, yeah, especially over the last 12 months, uh, where she was and where she's come now. It's just her want to do it, her will. Um, yeah, can't say, can't speak highly enough for her in that in that sense. So, Ellie, just off camera, you were talking about you had a dark period, and you said in, um, earlier in the interview you nearly quit shooting. How has Steve helped you turn that around, and, and what sort of things have you done? to get yourself back in love with the sport? Honestly, it was just spending time together on the range and everything. You know, I think Steve and I's relationship really took a turn and we really had to be honest with each other in what did we want to achieve and where we wanted to go. So we got honest with each other and I don't think our relationship has been any more strong in this six year period that Steve's been coaching me. And we dug deep. We trained four, th three, four times a week and we got really honest and figured out what needed to be fixed. A lot of it was in my head, which Steve knows, <laughs> which Steve knows how to do really, really well because 
Steve knows me as a person as well. He knows how I think, he knows how I do things. And yeah, we just really dug deep and obviously we're seeing those results right now. And Steve, uh, you said you had a bit of a back issue, so that actually gave you time. You're a bit off work and then you got to spend more time with Ellie and that's been really helpful for the training and the environment for you guys to uh, go forward? Oh, yeah. Just had a back injury at work and I was off for quite a period of time. So Ellie was able to come up here two, three times a week. Um, she made the trip up the coast. Um, yeah, four or five hour sessions, you know, shooting, a bit of talking, not constant shooting. But yeah, it just, the, the, everything just really went well from there. She just went up and up and up, just kept on going better. Uh, your training programs, obviously, uh, you know, precision and, and technique and, and repetitive of doing the same thing over and over and, and just in, ingraining that into the muscle memory that, you know, you come up to the right firing point, you, uh, you're you yeah. squeezing well, you're doing everything technically good, but uh, there's also other things you've got to do for her as well, don't, aren't there? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> a lot was the mental side of things. She, she was her own worst enemy when she had thoughts up there. Um, so we had a lot of different training sessions yeah. with different techniques. Uh, distractions, um, put scenarios forward, just to generally slowly keep making it happen so that she could be there where she was, you know. So it, it, we have a bit of a joke about <laughs> I told her back when she was about to quit, I said she could be one of the best shooters in Australia if it wasn't for the last five inches. And she looked at me and went, what? And I said, the distance where you left here and you're right. And so we have a joke about how big that is, you know. It went down to four inches and went back up a bit. And, yeah, so we have a little joke of where she is mentally and all that sort of stuff. But it's, oh, she's tenfold better than when she was ready to throw it in, so to speak. Well, I draw a parallel to uh, another sport in golf and, and Tiger Woods is always niggling his son on the golf course. His son's a very good young golfer. Yeah. And he said, when he can ignore my distractions, he'll be a champion. So, that, so you just said you're doing distractions. You've got to have yep. different sounds, different noises, music, people interfering, yep. talking stuff. You've just got to be able to block it out. You've got to be, you know, tunnel vision, radar, focus on the, on the target. Yep, just, yeah. just on, on your process at the time. Just make sure that stays the same. And it doesn't matter what's going on around you. You've just got to get in your shot process, whatever you're about to do, and just do what you know. And Ellie, we've just done some stuff with uh, the camera on your head and also on your arm, just to, a point of view of you shooting. Uh, can you talk through your shot process? I mean, I know you said it's in your head, and um, are you able to verbalise how you go from loading your air pistol to actually squeezing the trigger? Yeah, I mean, I can try and articulate it. Um, every process is different, you know. I have a bit of a three-stage process with my precision shooting. I take up a little bit of a top-up breath as I come down into the target just to make sure my lungs are fully ready to go for however long I decide to hold that gun, which sometimes I feel like I'm superwoman when I hold the gun, even though Steve tells me I'm not allowed to be superwoman. Um, yeah, it's just look, being really nice on that trigger, making sure you know, you're know you nice and smooth on it, making sure you have the good sight picture. You know, For six years, Steve has always been saying to me, sight picture, sight picture, squeeze and trust your process. Three words that I will never forget in my life is trust your process. Yeah, it's important. I mean, uh, everyone has it in all their sport. They have what works for them, whether it's golf or tennis or you know running or whatever it is you're doing, you've got to have that process and you've got to refine it and keep working on it, make it better and, and uh, just keep executing. Yep. Yeah, you know, the one percenters are the reason why people are great champions, you know. If you're work, not working on your one percenters, then you're not going to get anywhere. So if you're willing to take the time to become the best you can be, you need to look at those things that are going to get you those extra one, two points because that could mean the difference between winning a gold medal. And Steve, uh, exciting. Have you been to Peru before? Uh, I've only been out of the country once before. There that you was go. The Rio to watch... No, my son competed at the Olympics. And Blake, yes. Yeah. Exciting times. Uh, you know, Peru is a nice country. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it there. The food's fantastic and uh, great facilities. They, they've had the Pan American Games in 2019. I think they're getting it again maybe in 2025, I think, is, is it's going back to Peru. So they've got terrific facilities. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a really interesting country. Yeah, I'm just I'm going there with eyes wide open. I've got... <clears throat> I kind of know what to expect, but I'm sure it's nothing like what it's really going to be, but it'll be good, it really will. Yes, yeah. and don't forget they had the WSPS championships there as well, so, and you know, Steve's really excited to try some fried guinea pig over there, so... It is a delicacy. 
Yeah, apparently. I didn't try it, but it is a delicacy. Yeah, yeah I'm really I'm really excited to head over there. You know, the range is on an Air Force base, so it's probably going to be a very eye-opening experience. But I've seen some pictures of the range. It looks like a very beautiful, open range, and I can't wait to go and shoot my best there. Obviously, the focus is competing and doing your best, but how much downtime do you get to maybe have a slight bit of sightseeing or is it just going to be out the window of the bus going to the range? Well, we're actually going to Melbourne next weekend so we can have a camp with all the team leaders and all the athletes to map out all that sort of stuff, what we're doing, how long we get over jet lag. Um, yeah, there might be a little bit on day one or two, but then straight, we're in straight into a... They're actually having the South American Championships there. So we can't get a whole lot of training sessions, so all the, all the athletes are going to be entered in that as a training session type. Oh, thing. excellent. So yeah. you're going to shoot in the South American Championship as a lead-up to the World Championship. Yeah, that that's that's can, fantastic. That way they can get range time. Yeah, perfect. And so knowing what it's all about, what you have to expect, the calls, the lighting, everything. So. Yeah, so, so nothing as a surprise. When you get on the line in the World Championship, well, you're going to feel f very familiar with the environment? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. You know, the South American Championships will be a great opportunity to get used to the range, get used to the conditions, get used to the lighting, as Steve said, and just be able to um, work out how you got, you're going to feel on the line. You know, I'm a person that gets very nervous on the line, so being able to have an extra competition to kind of figure out how I can internalise all of that is going to be really useful for me. Peruvians love their sport too, so I'm sure you're going to get plenty of support there at the World Championships. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Well, Lee, as you sit here on the balcony at Cessnock Pistol Club, just reflecting on how good it is to have Steve Blackburn as an international coach taking Ellie Rudder, who does a lot of training here at Cessnock. You've helped develop her as a young athlete. Yeah, it's fantastic, Westy. Having Steve, who's the captain here at Cessnock Pistol Club, look after uh, Ellie and lots of other elite shooters during his, uh, his coaching career, it's fantastic to support everyone and get them overseas. Yeah, Ellie hopefully will go very, very well. I mean, she's on a trajectory. Her, obviously, on the horizon is Olympics. That's where she wants to get to. Yeah. Um, it all starts back at the club. Steve was doing tri-shoot this morning as well. So yeah, you've yeah. got the entry level and someone who's heading to the elite level. Yeah, that's right. Steve's being our captain. He's our sort of principal safety officer. So he's doing uh, brand new shooters who have only just picked up a gun for the first time. And then after he's done that, he's on the range with Ellie, making sure that she's uh, doing all that elite level, um, top level achievements, yeah. Mate, fantastic. Thank you, Cessnock Pistol Club, for allowing the development of young shooters and uh, giving them the trajectory right through the top. It's what we're here for and what we're all about and what we'll always be about. And Lee, wearing your other hat as president of uh, New South Wales APA, Ellie is the only Australian going and she's a New South Wales shooter. Uh, couldn't be prouder. It's fantastic to have uh, someone who's come up through the junior ranks and uh, as a woman as well, uh, having female achievements in, in any sport's a you know, magnificent thing and, it's, and it's, we're very proud of having us go over to Peru with, to represent us. Well, you know, on behalf of the entire Pistol Australia community, everyone's wishing you the best of luck overseas in Peru for the World Junior Championships. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, the support is unwavering and, you know, we need that support just to get us that extra bit ahead. So any support, any cheering you guys can do for me, go ahead. I love it.